be questions. Madam Governor, we just need to you mentioned that this was a failure of federal leadership that led to this. Um, but I'd like to know just what you would say to the Texans out there who believe that um, this money would be better spent on other priorities, such as education, increasing the electric grid, those things. Let's be clear about a couple of things. One is, when you look at what the legislature did last regular session with funding education, it was, was it more funding of education than before? So, more funding of education than ever before in the history of the state that we continued in this regular session. As it concerns the power grid, the public needs to know this. What the, the legislature did during the regular session, uh, they winterized the grid. Uh, they ensured the integrity of the grid so that it wouldn't go down like it did this last time. What happened this last time is that the uh, power generators and power transmitters they, they weren't subject to being exempt from being shut down. Uh, that's why you saw the downtown city lights of Fort Worth on for the residents without power. That's not gonna happen next time because uh, the uh, integral parts of the power grid will remain on. There is now greater ability to generate more power than ever before in the history of the state of Texas. And most importantly, is with the new leadership that we have, the way that the electric grid operates is completely different than the way this operated in the past. The way that it operated this past February and before that was in a crisis management mode. They literally waited until there was a crisis in order to summon more energy. Now they operate completely differently where they uh, get dispatchable power days in advance. That's why during the summertime when people had concerns, gosh, would we run out of power on the power grid? And during the summer, we hit an all-time uh, all high in the amount of power demand. We were able to meet that demand with plentiful supply because of the new strategies that are being used both by ERCOT as well as by the PUC to make sure that the power stays on. All that said, as your own local police officer put it, public safety is essential to everybody in this state. As your local police officer put it, as well as the last time I was here talking about this issue, as the Tarrant County Sheriff put it, the safety of people in Fort Worth and Tarrant County is challenged by what's happening on the border. When I had my meeting with the border sheriffs at the border in Del Rio, there were sheriffs from the Panhandle there talking about how their communities were suffering from inadequate safety because of what had filtered through Texas that had crossed the border. This is important to the everyday lives of people across every region of the entire state of Texas. And so we are doing the right job for our fellow Texans by making our community safer, by addressing the border, border security in a way that the Biden administration is failing to do. Governor, Governor we saw the yesterday, drone Governor, footage yesterday about 10,000 people underneath that bridge. I guess a lot of people are wondering where are they going to go? Could we see people ending up here in shelters in North Texas? I will, I will tell you the level of communication that we have had, this was yesterday, uh, and, and that is the de <coughs> Department of Defense, uh, as well as the uh, Director of Homeland Security, they are in charge of the people who are under that bridge, most of whom are from Haiti. And they have told us uh, that <coughs> the people who are under that bridge right now are gonna be relocated by the United States Department of Defense. Some are going to Arizona, others are going uh, to California, others uh, may be going to Laredo, we were told. Uh, but one thing that we know for a fact, and that is there's nothing but uncertainty and indecision by the Biden administration about exactly what they're gonna do. That's why if you look at photos that the National Guard has posted just an hour ago, you, you will see the National Guard, as well as the Department of, uh, Department of Public Safety, they have a perimeter area around that bridge area to make sure that the community of Del Rio is safe. And let me tell you why they're there doing what they're doing. We spoke this morning, we being my chief of staff and myself, with the mayor of Del Rio and he announced he was going to declare an emergency, which I assume has now been done already. He said that there were about 12,000 people under the bridge with more coming. 
He asked for the Texas Department of Public Safety as well as the Texas Department of Transportation to help with barriers that we assured him would be provided and they are already being provided. He, the mayor, said he is going to shut down the city-owned toll bridge to stop traffic coming in from Mexico. And yeah, I understand that's already been done and the uh, state agencies are helping to do that. He, the, the mayor says the situation in his city and area uh, is getting more tense under the bridge. We as state officials have an obligation to make sure that we use the National Guard, we use DPS, we use law enforcement at every level to de-escalate the tension around that bridge to make sure that we keep our state and our community safe. Mr. Governor, you had said you know, the, the, the central theme of this is keeping Texans safe. Um, earlier today, I reported that across the state, at schools, an additional 23,000 kids were uh, tested positive for COVID, and an additional 3,800 staffers have been uh, tested positive for COVID on campuses. You and your government are fighting tooth and nail to prevent school districts and local governments from, uh, from imposing mask mandates to keep the kids safe. So how do you reconcile the two, you know, keeping people safe by shutting off the border, but not giving local governments the, the tools or the, the means to, uh, uh, to make their own policies in an effort to keep their students and their citizens safe? We've seen the challenges arise from a patchwork approach uh, to try to implement policies because there are some jurisdictions that are following my executive order and others that are not, and that sows confusion among the populace. What we know are these facts, uh, and, and that is uh, in areas where people are vaccinated or where they have acquired immunity, uh, their probability of getting COVID uh, is slim to none. And we, because of that, what we are seeing is uh, we've seen for more than four weeks now a decline in hospitalizations. And we've seen, uh, going back to at least July the 23rd, uh, a reduction in the positivity rate in the state of Texas. So the bottom line is uh, that what's happening in Texas uh, is a repetition of what we've seen in other jurisdictions, whether the other jurisdictions be states or countries, uh, of the Delta variant quickly uh, burning through a population uh, and then fading away. And if, if that repetition continues, uh, we've already seen the worst of the Delta variant, uh, and we will soon see uh, this uh, variant of, of COVID, uh, hopefully soon passing, and, and people will be able to get back to their normal activities. That said, this is very important, and that is for wearing masks in schools, we believe in ultimate local control, and that is the parents. The parents have the right and the responsibility to make the decisions that parents believe is in the safest interest of their child. Last Governor, question. Governor, 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 when we spoke last week on the abortion bill, you said that it is the number one goal for the state of Texas to eliminate rape. Is that a realistic goal, and if so, how do you plan to accomplish it? Let me tell you what I've done, and which will show you a pathway of where we are going. And I'm, I can't give you every single detail because, candidly, that will take too long. But let me give you a synopsis of my approach to ensure uh, that the state of Texas is doing everything that we can uh, to reduce sexual assault in the state. Let's go back to when I was the Attorney General of Texas. When I was the Attorney General, I went and testified in the Texas Senate in support of legislation that they ultimately passed that made it a death penalty sentence for any repeat child sex offender. And then as Attorney General, I defended that law in court. In addition to that, uh, when I was the Attorney General, I created a unit to investigate and to prosecute human trafficking in Texas. During that human trafficking, that's one of the ways that some women and children are subjected to being raped. More recently, as governor, I have processed more rape kits than any governor in the history of the state of Texas. Processing those rape kits helps to identify rapists that can lead to the prosecution. Uh, with the help of the people at this table here right now, with the, the chair of uh, House Appropriations and Chair of Senate Finance, 
If I recall correctly, the number is you all appropriated about $100 million to increase crime lab testing and to clean out the backlog of rape kits in Texas. When we did that also, knowing that we would be cleaning out the backlog of rape kits and, and tested uh, 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 rape kits, we would also identify more people who were suspected rapists. Knowing that, we extended the statute of limitations to give prosecutors more time to be able to arrest and to prosecute those rapists. In addition to that, I signed a law creating Sexual Assault Survivors Task Force that is located in the office of the governor and it helps sexual assault victims. And then on top of that, extremely importantly, during the regular session, I made it an emergency item that Texas pass bail reform. The reason for that is because there are some jurisdictions in the state of Texas where dangerous criminals were being, like rapists, were being released from jail, sometimes on personal recognizance bonds, going out in the community and reoffending. One of the best things that we can do to make sure that we do not have dangerous criminals back on the streets is making sure we keep them behind bars. Because the Democrats broke quorum during the regular session, that bail reform bill did not pass. Because they did not show up for the first special session, that bail reform bill did not pass. I told them, and I told Texas, I would keep calling special sessions until we get that bail reform bill passed. Fortunately, the Democrats came back to the session, this most recent special session, and with the leadership of the people at this table, as well as others, we passed bail reform in Texas, keeping more dangerous criminals like rapists behind bars. Relatedly, another bill that I wanted to see passed was to ensure that we would not, in Texas, defund police like what we've seen in other jurisdictions across the country. You see in a large city after large city and other states across the country, crime is going up, including sexual assault, because of defund police programs. When police are defunded, that obviously means you have fewer police uh, to respond to or protect people from uh, people like rapists. I will not accept defunding police in Texas which is why these legislators passed and I signed in the law about prohibitions and penalties for any jurisdiction that's even thinking about defunding the police. In addition to that, I created a child sex trafficking team in the office of the governor that is the national gold standard for dealing with these types of crimes, which once again, too often lead to sexual assault. This is just a thumbnail sketch of a long list of things that I've done to address <clears throat> sexual assault in Texas. We are committed to making sure that as we keep our community safe, we do more to help those who could be subject to sexual assault. Great, thank you guys so much for